This is my 2019 iPACE HSE and I'm planning to fit a dash cam combined with rear view mirror. Never done anything like this before so it'll take some time and some working out. I'm planning to fit a front camera behind the front mirror on the windscreen and the rear camera inside under the spoiler right at the back you can see the central bar that will require taking the spoiler off and I'm also going to have to take the trim from the side of the dashboard off and fit an ODB power supply to the socket underneath because I reckon that's going to be more effective than taking a power supply from the fuse box under the rear seat. Here's my table with on the left hand side I've got the port window uh, dash mirror, dash cam mirror, um, and all the wires and the two front, that's the rear uh, camera, that's the front camera. I've got some instructions which I've downloaded on how to remove the spoiler and this is the ODB connector with switch and stabiliser um, and connectors. I've got two devices for manipulating the trim. I've also got a vernier for measuring the gap at the back on the spoiler, which is supposed to be four millimeters. That's just here. So when I reinstall it, I'm going to have to measure it. I've just measured it and here at the moment it's three millimeters and it's four millimeters on the other side. So it doesn't look wrong, but uh, shows there can be some variation. I'm going to start by taking the rubber trim off the door because I need to bring the cables down on the driver's side to get to the ODB connector. So I'm going to take this off and reveal this panel here which I need to try and find a way of taking off. Well that was pretty easy, should be plenty of room to get the cables up there, so be careful of the airbag and there's plenty of space down here to hide spare cable, that's a good, good start. So the first thing you have to do is take these corner pieces off. It looks as if they're held on by some clips of some sort, possibly screws. See what happens. I've never used these trim levers before but I can see why they're so useful Thank you. 
I can see why they're so important. It'd be so easy to damage the trim if you're using a screwdriver. Where's the point to reaching it? So there appears to be a clip somewhere around here. If you've done it before, it would be very simple. But knowing where to start. Ah, there's a clip. There we go, I pulled it off with my hands in the end. Excellent. Get rid of a spider. The opportunity to clean under here. Interesting earth point there which could be useful at some point. Probably won't need it, but it's nice to know it's there. So pull the other one off with my hands. Yeah. Oh yeah, that came off easily. Oh I see. They just uh, hole and just slides down. If I just slid it down it would have fallen off. So that's useful to know. Um, we must now have to remove the five nuts. Oh, we have to remove this one as well by accident. Oh well. Oh it came off easily. That's good. So I've got five nuts one there, one there, one there, and the same two there. Now it says in the instructions to release the real spoiler, but it also says you need to have assistance to remove the rear spoiler. Now, the components must be removed in the sequence illustrated. So the next thing to do is to undo those four nuts, there's five, five nuts. Get off easily. completely. I get to leave. Two to the end. This is tighter than the other one. I think I'm going to put some WD-40 on. It's on the roof of the car in case I scratch the paint. Right, 
So all the nuts off. Make sure it goes over the fin, shark fin, and into the crack. Make sure it's big enough because the spoiler is remarkably big, much bigger than you imagine when you're looking at the car. I suppose the danger is that the screw, screws that I've just been working on could easily scratch the car. I think I might put another cloth on. Gently release the lock mechanism shows a screwdriver. I'm going to have to support this better on this end. Right. There's obviously a technique to releasing these clips, and once you've done it, I think it'll be very easy to do it a second time. But the first time, and you're not quite sure what you need to do and how you need to get your hand in makes it a lot harder that's the clip that needs to come off there we go, it's got it oh that's easier than once you know it's relatively easy so just one more to come Whilst holding the weight of the spoiler, I can see why it would be easy, better if you had two people, but it doesn't look that terrible. Maybe I can lay it down there. I can. Oh, that will help. Great deal. So I'm not putting any pressure on the other side there. I can now uh, put the screwdriver in and prise it up. Yeah, and then pull. Great, got it. Lovely. Now, what I have to do is transfer the spoiler to the table. That was pretty easy. Overall, next time I do it a lot quicker. These labels are coming loose, so they might as well come off. Now, my plan is to fit the rear camera, which is this one, like this. But this surface here is curved. If I put it there, I think it's going to be obscured by this lip. So I'm going to have to work out how I will build it up a bit or 
find a way of getting over that. I can't put it right to the edge without putting something under the back of here in order to hold it in the right position. I might be able to do that with one of these 3M pads. I've got some spare ones which I came, which came with my GoPro which I could use. I've decided to fit this bracket backwards and I've made a groove in this lip here to take the back of the bracket. There are some holes in the bracket and I've got some screws to screw in and this ridge is probably stronger than anywhere else but I'm very worried that these screws are too wide, too long. I've also put a towel underneath in order to protect the paintwork. So what I'm going to try and do is stick this on with the sticky pads. I'm going to stick one on underneath the camera and another one underneath this bracket and that should take into account this curve here. Okay so now I'm going to use just these sticky pads to fix the camera in place. If the camera were to fall off the worst that would happen is that it would hang loose on the cable. So what I might do is when I fitted it put um, some extra tape over the top and maybe some duck, uh, some um, I may put some Gorilla Tape over the top in order to protect it further and avoid it falling off. But I don't really want to put screw holes through here because I don't think I've got screws that are short enough. If these were uh, two thirds of that length I'd be happy. But I'm not comfortable about doing that unless I have to. So. I'm going to attach it with the sticky pads and if that proves unsatisfactory I'll get some small screws. There we go. That's going to take most of the strain and then the, the, uh, the pad on the back of the camera will only stick on this ridge and notice there's a bit sticking out that is of the tape but I don't think that's going to look unpleasant when it's pretty secure and obviously as the glue dries it'll be better. Now I think what I'm going to do is try and run this along here. Um, but it may be better not to take it through there but to take it to one side. One side. I'm going to stick this down with duct tape or Gorilla tape in order to hold it in place. I think I'll put a bit around this strut. Once it's all in place I might take that off but see what it looks like. Let's get some tape. And what I've used is all over extreme gorilla tape. So if I put if I cut the piece full width it's going to be too long. front of a spoiler and I've, what I've done is I've rotated it around that way. So I'm going to stick this down with the tape.
Gut. I think yeah, this would be the thing that would most put me off wanting to do this job again. Or if I'd known what I was letting myself in for, this is what would have put me off. Can I pull this down? Oh, ah, that's significantly improved it. Pulling this down means that I can get, ah, and I can pull this one up. That's the way of doing it. Right. Let's go back to the metal. That was the metal coat hanger idea. And poking that through. I can do it from down here. There. So it means I can pull it around a lot more. Yes, that's going in quite well. The problem is, I think I'm going to have to pull down rather than up. Oh, ah, there we go. Right, so I think I'm going to have to bring the wire down this way. Maybe a rod would do the job. Yeah, strong enough piece of wood might work. A point on the end. So it's going to go down this way. Sure, what I'm gaining. Over. And plug. So it can't pull out. I can put some tape around to try and make it as sharp as possible. The strength is being taken, hopefully, by the hook. Hook I've just made.
if that works. Try pushing this in through this bit there. Hobbs and just pulling. It's been useful having some washing up liquid going in there as I think that's helped lubricate it. Okay, so it's taken me about an hour to get the cable through that rubber boot and I've learnt a lot. I could have done it in five or ten minutes if I'd known several important things. The first is you must take off the rubber boot at both ends. Secondly, using fairy liquid to lubricate the rubber and also the cable as it's going through uh, makes it a lot easier and thirdly if ever you want to get tape off something don't use Gorilla Tape because it's a real pain to take off now I've got to put the spoiler back on and to do that I've got to connect up this trim um, but I'm going to take the piece of trim off the other side first, now I know how easy it comes off um, and clean underneath because I know it's going to be very muddy. Right, so I've cleaned out behind that other piece of trim on the left hand side and uh, put the cover back on both sides. I've poked the cable through this hole with my finger and reached through my hand and pulled to pull it through. So I need to pull the whole of the cable through and then I'll be able to fit this rubber boot back on that connector and I'll be using washing up liquid again to, get, to make it slightly slippy. It makes so much difference to lubricate it. Much easier job. So then I'm going to run the cable down here and then underneath this piece of trim here and take it towards the front. Not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I'm going to put the tailgate back on first in case I need to drive anywhere in the, before I finished. Right. The next job is to put the spoiler back on and I'm positioning my coat on this side and the towels on the other side to take the weight and to protect the car and the spoiler whilst I'm positioning it. I've got three cables to join up there, one of these on each side and then in the centre I've got the one for the camera. So let's go and get the assembly. It seems to have fixed on pretty tightly there with the tapes and the double-sided adhesive. Um, they've got this the, the, um, super glue seems to have worked well there, and the plug is there, the socket is there there. So what I need to do now is to take this and position it again on the coat and the towels. It does say you need two people to do this but I think providing you protect the car and the spoiler should be okay 
Now what I'm going to do is connect the connectors up first so let's lay it on its back I can connect the one for the camera it goes only one way that looks like it I don't know whether I need to waterproof it or not maybe so, can I hide the extra bit of cable? There's no sense in pulling it right through. As long as I've got plenty. I need to plug this one back in securely. This will be for the stop lights, the high level ones. This goes in a long way which means that the cable is quite tight it doesn't do it any good so I'm going to fold this up like that <laughs> and then lift it back on this side to plug this one in I think they put a longer bit of cable in It needs to be a centimetre or two longer, and it would make it so much easier. There we go. Oh, it's not quite in. It's in there. Good. So we're fully connected. Now what I'm going to do is get the thing lined up with the screws. Nearly there, oh no. It's got to go here. It's got to come across about an inch. I suppose it would help if there were two people working on it there. So, I can see the two screws there, and one of them there, and the one in the middle, so it's almost done. There we go. So what I've got to do now is do these bolts up and make sure that the gap's correct. side and then one in the middle now what we have to be careful about is the gap let's find the spanner so I'm going to pull this gap to the maximum but I'm not going to tighten it right up this is going to loosely tighten it's in about the right place. When you're testing the tailgate fitting, put a cloth or a wadge of cloths on the back of a boot in order to stop the tailgate closing completely in case you've got the setting wrong. Then use the remote control to close the boot with. Keep an eye on the gap and 
check that it's not going to hit. It gets very close at one point when closing. So can get a bit worrying. You can adjust the distance by releasing the five volts. So I've got my spoiler on the back, I've got the cable around here. Uh, this bit of connection here, there are some tabs in this white plastic bracket and I suspect if we undo these tabs we can clip it into the rubber in such a way it just plugs in. So, see if I can encourage, there seems to be four tabs, one in each hole. Getting to So what I've now got to do is put this boot around the white plastic So I'm going to take this down here and round here fitted the plug in the ODB socket. That's the switch for switching the whole thing on and off. That's the stabiliser and low voltage cutout. the panel back on the side here and I've run the cable up here to here and now I'm going to take it across on the top of the screen. Because there's so much cable for the rear camera I've decided to come down the driver's door post, the B post, take it underneath the trim here and down past the tread plate up to here, I've taken the trim panel off here. There's a lot of space under there, and I'm going to lose all the spare wires over there and for the power supply in that area there. I'm then going to take both wires. I've already put the power wire up here and along there. There's a lot of cable to hide, but fortunately, you can poke it up here between the headlining and this black housing. There's a lot of space up there. Um, the other important thing is the power supply cable comes with a straight plug. Uh, that's going to cause problems getting the mirror in the right position. So I've ordered a right angle bend. So allowing for the right angle power supply connector, USB one, um, that should fit in fine. Um, the other potential problem there is the camera plug, which touches the roof, the plastic housing on the roof, and that governs how, what angle you can put the mirror at but you can move it on the rubber clips. I've stuck a wedge-shaped piece of foam on the back 
of the port window mirror at the bottom and I'm using the larger rubber straps to attach it. The foam presses on the bottom of the existing rear view mirror and pushes it out allowing the connectors at the top space. I haven't fitted the anti-glare filter yet because I'm not sure whether I need it. Here's the final installation of the rear camera. 